Hi 4-H'ers, welcome back and in this video we are going to be talking about the order Hymenoptera. Hymenoptera are all the bees, wasps, and ants. All bees, wasps, and ants are related to each other in the same order called Hymenoptera and for the most part a lot of these guys are going to be beneficial. We think about bees as being good guys, maybe not necessarily wasps and ants, um, but it's going to be variable if they're good or bad and their host is also going to vary as well. All of the bees, I'm sorry, all of the wasps and the ants have chewing mouth parts. They all have a complete life cycle. Bees have what are called lapping mouth parts, which means they can lap up nectar, but they also have the ability to chew a little bit too. But the wasps and the ants only chew. So let's get started looking at some of these specimens. Most of the hymenoptera that we're going to look at um, are actually half and half are juniors and seniors. So intermediates, you guys don't have any specific intermediate insects. You guys are going to know all the ones that the juniors know. So for juniors and intermediates, we're going to start first looking at bumblebees. So bumblebees are going to be, of the bees that we look at, are going to be very large. They are definitely beneficial. They can be found in meadows or pretty much anywhere where there are flowers around. They are pollinators and so they're considered good guys. They have a very fuzzy body. Their whole entire body is fuzzy from the head area, the thorax, and even their abdomen. And that is important for you seniors to know that the fuzzy abdomen is found on bumblebees. These guys nest in the ground. Um, they are somewhat social where they will have a few hundred individuals and then during the winter time a queen will stay in the ground, wake up in the springtime, and start the colony all over again. But they will die off except for a queen when it gets really cold and so that makes them different than honeybees which are very social insects. Um, a wasp that we are going to look at is the cicada killer wasp. Cicada killer wasps are one of the largest wasps, if not the largest wasp, that we have in Texas. You guys may have heard of the Asian giant hornet. Sometimes the media calls it the murder hornet. Not found in Texas, but a lot of people see these cicada killer wasps and they think that they see that Asian giant hornet. These guys are actually smaller and these are native to Texas, so they're always found here and not a problem. They're actually considered good guys. They're beneficial. They um, eat cicadas and so they will sting a cicada, drag it into a hole in the ground, lay their eggs there, and let their babies that hatch out eat that cicada. And so they're found in the summertime when cicadas are common. These guys um, the host or where they're found is going to be in the soil because they make little burrows. They um, are considered beneficial, they're not harmful. They can be aggressive or territorial as males, but the females could care less if you're around. And what's funny is the males, while they buzz around your head, they can't actually sting you. It's the females that can sting, but they don't really want to. They're not interested in you. I'm, we talked about bumblebees a second ago. Honeybees are going to be smaller than bumblebees. They are fuzzy. That's the difference between a bee and a wasp is that bees are very fuzzy, whereas these wasps are very smooth and naked. Honeybees are definitely beneficial. While they can sting, they do more good than they do bad. They're very important in the ecosystem. The host, or where you'll find them, is flowers, um, but they're also found inside of, of um, hives. And so you might be asked, are they found inside of a hive? Yes, these guys would be. These are the most important insects to humans. They provide us with products like honey and wax that we can't necessarily make on our own. And they also do really good at pollinating. So being a pollinator is why they are the most important insect. Another type of wasp, and I can tell this is a wasp because it's relatively um, naked and smooth on its body. This is the mud dauber. I can tell that this is a mud dauber because it has a very thin area between the thorax and the abdomen. It has this skinny, skinny little piece right here. So if you see that, you're looking at a mud dauber. These are considered beneficial and you're going to find them around buildings where they're going to build these mud tubes of different shapes and sizes. And um, it could be a nuisance because those mud tubes might not look very pretty, but these guys are eating spiders and other insects and hauling them into those little tubes, feeding their baby, and eating those themselves. So they're not bad. They don't want to sting you. Um, they don't hurt your house. They don't want to hurt you. Um, but some people can find them a nuisance when they make those tubes on the side of their house. Now, 
We talked about bees and wasps, but there are a lot of ants that we're going to have to be familiar with. And so if you're a junior or a senior, the two ants that you need to know are the red harvester ant and the fire ant, the red imported fire ant. So you don't want to just call this a red ant, and you don't want to just call it a harvester ant. You have to give it the three words, red harvester ant. These are actually considered inconsequential. Some people consider them a pest because they make these big flat mounds. So they have a hive that, or a nest that is flat with a single hole where they're coming in and out and they can kind of clear out all the vegetation around it and some people don't really like that. Um, but they are considered beneficial because they are the food source for the Texas horned lizard. So we consider them kind of inconsequential. Um, they can be either good or they can be bad, but for the contest, inconsequential, meaning neutral, not necessarily good, not necessarily bad. They do have the ability to sting, so if you grab one or you step on one um, or you let it crawl up your leg, it might sting you and it can be pretty painful. And what they feed on are seeds, so they're foraging for seeds and harvesting for seeds to take down into their nest. The um, place where you're going to find these guys are going to be pastures or um, flat areas. They're not going to be found like on a hill or anything like that. They like flat areas like a pasture. The thing about the red harvester ant that's going to look different from the red imported fire ant is that every part of their body is red. So when you look up close, the head is red, the thorax is red, and the abdomen is red. They also are pretty large, but Red imported fire ants can vary in size. And so if you look at this red imported fire ant, this picture is probably better. They are, a, they're not quite as red. They're more of a brownish red on the head, on the thorax. Their abdomen is going to look more black in color. So the difference between the two is the harvester ant is red all the way across, whereas red imported fire ants seem to be two toned. And we know that red imported fire ants are going to be pests. They are found in pastures and in lawns where they build those big fluffy mounds and they come out from everywhere. And the reason why they are considered a pest is because they make your lawn look ugly, but they have a very painful sting that people can have a bad allergy to or just not want to get stung by um, a red imported fire ant. Don't just call these guys fire ants and don't just call them red fire ants. We have to call them red imported fire ants because they're imported from South America. They're not native to the United States. So if you can remember that, maybe that will help you to remember to add that word imported into their common name. Another hymenopteran that you juniors need to know is called a velvet ant. And actually a velvet ant is not actually an ant. It is a wasp and it is one of the only wasps as fuzzy as you see it right here. So velvet ants are considered to be a pest because they're able to sting and they can be found in pastures and places where they sting cows and it can be very painful, cause a lot of damage to your livestock. They, um, the ones that do not have wings are females. The ones that do have wings are males. So they, um, uh, if you're asked that, females have no wings, males have wings. They can be various colors. They can even have spots on their body that appear to be, um, have no fuzz on them. Um, but if you see furry, velvety color, and it doesn't have to be red, it can also be yellowish or orange, or it can even be black. And I've even seen some of them with a little bit of white. So you're just looking for fuzz all over their body. These are called velvet ants. And they look more like an ant than a wasp, and definitely more like a wasp than a bee. They're also called cow killers. They have a very severe sting, so you can remember that and know that they're a pest. And where you're gonna find them, of course, is in the soil on the ground because they are ground nesting insects running across trails. They're really, really fast, and they're eating the ground nesting insects as well. And I believe the final insect for you juniors and intermediates in the Hymenoptera order is a yellow jacket. Yellow jackets host is in the ground. They might also be in trees or on structures. They like to fill holes. So they might be inside of a hollow part of a tree. They might be in the hollow part of your wall. Or they usually like to be under the ground and usually around roots of plants because it's easy for them to kind of move that soil out of the way. They are considered a pest. They have a very painful sting. They have many wasps inside of their colony and they can be very aggressive if they feel like you are threatening their house. 
These are different from paper wasps. Paper wasps aren't actually on the contest, um, but don't get confused between the two. These guys are shorter, a little bit fatter, and they are black and yellow in coloring. If you get anything kind of black and yellow in coloring that looks like a wasp, call it a yellow jacket, even if they accidentally show you the wrong picture for the contest or give you the wrong insect for the contest. Because sometimes I've seen where they might add a paper wasp and call it a yellow jacket. But the true yellow jackets live in the ground and they look like these guys look very different from the paper wasps that make those paper nests. These guys forage for sweet things. So you might find them around your Coke bottles or around trash cans or at the uh, ballpark, maybe they're where the snow cone machine is. They will feed on other insects, so they can be beneficial in that way, but overall they're considered a pest because of the sting that they inflict on people. If you are a junior or a senior, you guys don't need to know these other insects that we're gonna look at. Um, I'm sorry, if you're a junior or an intermediate, you don't need to know these insects that we're gonna look at, but if you're a senior, stay on, because you are gonna need to know these next um, six or so insects. One being a bald-faced hornet. So bald-faced hornet, hornets are going to be found in the woodlands or wooded areas, places where there are trees. They are a pest because they sting and they make large nests. They uh, make a paper nest and you can see that big kind of like a pinata kind of a, a paper nest. The difference between them and other wasps is that they are black and creamy or white colored. They're not black and yellow, so that's important to remember. Another hymenoptera that you seniors need to know are the carpenter bees. Carpenter bees will drill holes like you see right there where they will lay their eggs. And so they, the host is a fence post for the contest. They are considered a pest because they can cause some damage to homes and decks and fences and um, posts on your on your porch and places like that. These are fuzzy and dark and they look very much like carpenter bees. I'm mean, sorry, they look like um, bumblebees. Let's change that. They look very much like bumblebees, but they have a shiny abdomen. So look right here. Our bumblebee is fuzzy all the way onto its abdomen. Whereas carpenter bees have what we call a shiny hiney. They have no fuzz on their rear end. And so that's the big difference between the two when you look at them morphologically. Horn tails are kind of a unique type of a wasp that doesn't have a real thin waist. So it's very wide. Um, and these guys will lay their eggs. So they have this thing called an ovipositor right here. And she will lay her eggs in logs and the larva eats the wood and the dead logs. And so they can be considered a pest because they can cause some damage to plants um, and wood, but um, they uh, are going to be found where you have dead wood for them to lay their egg in, eggs in. And so they can come in lots of different colors, um, but they usually have some yellow markings on them. And what I would look for is that ovipositor plus that thick waist. So they look very they look like different types of wasps. Ichneumon wasps are another type of wasp. These guys are kind of unique. They're often overlooked in nature, but they're around and very common. The host is going to be flowers. They're going to go after flowers um, for pollination, and so they are considered beneficial. They are also parasitic. They will lay their eggs in prey and um, of other insects, and then the larvae will develop and eat that bug from the inside out. And oftentimes they're laying their eggs in insects that we don't necessarily want to have around. And so that's a beneficial thing. Um, the cool thing about these guys is that they have really long antenna. They have a long abdomen and long legs. And their ovipositor, the females have ovipositors, and these are really, really long. Males will not have this, but females have a really long ovipositor. And when I see that, I know I'm looking at an ichneumon wasp. They're also pretty large in size. They can be an inch or more, um, but then some species can be smaller. Leaf cutting bees look really similar to honeybees. And so I'm going to show you a picture in a minute of how you can maybe tell the difference between the two, but it's, it's difficult for even me to tell the difference between a honeybee and a leaf cutting bee. So let's, let's focus more maybe on knowing things about the leaf cutting bee. So leaf cutting bees are going to be found around flowers. They are pollinators and so they are considered beneficial. But one of the things that they'll do that's very interesting is they will chew almost perfect circles or like three quarter circles 
and leaves and take these cuttings to line their nests where they lay their eggs. So it's kind of like insulating their nest or putting up wallpaper in their nest. And so sometimes they can cause some damage to plants in that way, but rarely does it cause major damage where the plant doesn't do very well. Um, so here's some pictures of a honeybee and a leafcutter bee. Leafcutter bees usually have much longer mouth parts and when they're dead, their mouth parts will come out. So you could try to look at that. The other thing that I notice about them is that um, leafcutter bees have much thicker, fatter middle legs than a honeybee does. And the coloring is a little bit different. I, they also have a lot of yellow on their belly. So I look for that to differentiate between the two of them. But they look really similar. So you're going to have to do some studying and some Googling to look at pictures of different ones to see if you can pick out the differences and identify them. Sawflies are another um, type of hymenopteran that looks really similar to those um, horntails. They also have a really thick waist, but I think on the contest what you'll probably get is a picture of their babies because the baby is the one that's the most significant. And they're a unique hymenoptera because they feed on leaf tissue. So the host is gonna be plants. That's where they lay their eggs and spend their time. That's where the babies eat. They have a broad waist as an adult. And the difference between them and caterpillars is that uh, most species are are green but you can google and see that there are other pictures other species that have different colors but you can see their little eyeballs they have a little head and they have a little eyeball there and so to me that's very unique and then the other thing is that the females will not have that ovipositor right there tarantula hawks are also very large wasps not as large as our um, cicada killers but some of them can get pretty close these are found in wooded areas they are beneficial um, they're actually going to sting a tarantula, drag it into a hole in the ground, lay their eggs, and let their babies eat that tarantula. So tarantulas are beneficial, um, but these guys, but we also want something to help keep tarantula numbers in check, and that's these guys are what are going to do that. So they're just part of the ecosystem and considered to be beneficial for that reason. They are a black or a bluish metallic shiny color and their wings are going to be orangey or brown in color and so they're very unique in the way that they look. They also have really curly curly um, antenna. And finally we have our Texas leaf cutting ant. So the difference between the Texas leaf cutting ant from our fire ants and from our harvester ants is they are also a whole solid color that will appear red. This one looks a little bit more tan I guess or brown but they will appear red to your eyes on the contest but if you look closely they have spines on their head and then three sets of spines on their thorax that is going to tell you the difference between them and the harvester ant and also the fire ant but they're about the same size as your harvester ants and um, even large red imported fire ants they're found in wooded areas pastures um, you can even find them in your backyard sometimes and they're considered to be a major pest because they will cut the leaves off of plants to the point where the plant will die and they carry those leaves back into their nest and then they chew on the edges of the leaves and fungus will grow and they eat that fungus as food so they're called fungus farmers they don't actually eat the leaves but they need the leaves to grow the fungus which is their food source and so for that reason they're a major pest because they well, these colonies are gigantic, and so they'll strip whole trees um, even overnight. So um, definitely know they're a pest. Remember that they have the spines on the head and three on their thorax, and that is their really good key characteristic. So good luck studying your hymenopterans. There's not a ton of them, but unfortunately a lot of them can look really similar. So make sure you're able to differentiate between all the ones that do look similar.